الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته We've been discussing the significance of ma'rifah as something that generates sadness, which is the essential part of mourning, but also something that can be strengthened over time and you can go to higher levels of ma'rifah. And these gatherings of mourning for Imam Hussein, these majalis, are designed by Ahlul Bayt salam in order to increase our ma'rifa. That is the main thing that we have to achieve from these majalis. Inshallah, we'll talk about it later. <coughs> Talking about ma'rifa. We talked about different levels of ma'rifa of the tragedy of Karbala, something which is available to all human beings, something which is available to Muslims, something which is available to those who believe in the imamate, in the <coughs> wilaya of Ahlul Bayt salam. And we talked about different aspects of this. And then last night we talked about the meaning of knowing Imam of the age. And we connected that with the concept of a role model. And we said that a deeper understanding of role model is not to leave your role model in that historical context and take something and bring it to your own context. You must have so much understanding of your model that can you bring your role model to your life today. Not just take you know, bits and pieces. You must imagine that your role model is living today. You must be able to understand what he would do or would ask from you to do today. Then I said that in this way, we would have not only Imam Mahdi Ajjalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. With us today, we are able to have all the members of Ahlul Bayt with us today. Although the one who is actually in charge is Imam Mahdi, but they are all alive, they are all watching us, and they are all our role models. Indeed, to understand what Imam Mahdi wants from us, we have to refer to the previous ones because we have never had direct experience with Imam Zaman. How can I understand what Imam Zaman wants from me without hearing him, without having communication from him, by knowing the lives and teachings of the previous infallibles? So this is what we have been talking. Tonight, inshallah, we want to see what is the connection between Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Zaman Ajjalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif Because although all 14 ma'asumin they same they are same in teachings and in practicing Islam and kullukum nurul wahid they are all the same light but there is a special link between Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Mahdi. And this for us is very significant. So tonight I will mention 
this connection and tomorrow we will see what can we gain out of it inshallah please recite salawat <laughs> one of the things that we find is this Quranic verse which is in Surat Isra number 33 and there are many hadiths about this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim wala taqtulu nafs allati harrama Allah illa bil haq do not kill the soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given respect and honor a soul which is innocent a soul which is not criminal if someone is criminal if someone has to be receiving justice that's another issue but the one who is innocent has not done anything wrong it's a big mischief it's one of the greatest sins to kill an innocent person ولا تقتل النفس التي حرم الله بالحق ومن قتل مظلوما and if someone is killed while he is oppressed without doing anything wrong he is killed فقد جعلنا لوليه سلطانا Allah says we give to his guardian the guardian of the dead one, the killed one, power and authority and sovereignty. Fala yusrif al qatl. But he should not kill in an extravagant way. He should not kill those who are not involved. So you cannot say, because, for example, that people, the people of that town, one of them has killed, for example, my brother, I'm going to kill all of them, or indiscriminately. This is not allowed. The guardian of the one who is killed, they can claim the blood from the people who are responsible, not from everyone. فَلَا يُسْرَفْ بِالْقَاتْلِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مَنْصُورًا The one who is the guardian of the one who is killed, while he was innocent, would be helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would be victorious. Allah gives him sultan, Allah gives him upper hand, and he would be helped. Okay, this ayah is very general. But the most obvious example or case for this is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There are hadiths which says that this Madhloom, who is killed in the first place, refers to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. For example, Imam Bagr alayhi salam says, al maqtul al Hussein, The one who is killed while he was mazloom is Hussein. Vavaliyuhu and his guardian, although all Imams after Hussein are the guardians, but in a very special way is the 12th Imam. وَالْوَلِيُّهُ الْقَائِمُ أَجَّلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَرَجَهُ الشَّرِيفُ He is the guardian. So the one that Allah supports and make him victorious over the killers is the 12th Imam. وَالْإِسْرَافُ فِي الْقَاتْلِ أن يقتل غير قاتله. إسراف here means to kill someone who is not a killer. And إنه كان منصورا means that إنه لا يذهب من الدنيا حتى ينتصر برجل من آل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. This dunya will not expire unless a man from the family of the Prophet would come and that is the guardian of Imam Hussein alayhi salam 
كما ملأت ظلما وجورا What is the demand of that guardian of that innocent life? Establishment of justice all over the world. This is a very important point. Remember this, inshallah, tomorrow I will explain. That without establishing complete justice on the world, the blood of Imam Hussein has not received its compensation. In another hadith, Imam Raza alayhi salam says, وَمَنْ قُتِلَ مَظْلُومًا relates to Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Mahdi. So, this is one evidence. The Quranic verse and many hadith which connects Imam Mahdi to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There are more than 300 hadith, 300 hadith, which stresses on the fact that Imam Mahdi is from the progeny of Hussein. There are about 185 of them from the Prophet, and the rest from other members of Ahlul Bayt. So imagine 185 hadith just from the Prophet which says that Mahdi is from the progeny of Hussein. And there are hadiths which says progeny of Lady Fatima, but about Imam Hussein in particular, emphasis has been made. For example, there is a hadith from Imam Hussein himself. He says, Menna ithna ashara Mahdiya. There will be 12 people who are guided, 12 ma'asumin, Imams who are guided. All the Imams are guided. Avvalohum Amirul Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. The first Imam who is guided by Allah, he doesn't need to be guided by people, he receives his guidance from Allah subhanahu is Imam Ali alayhi salam. Wa'akhirohum and the last of them At-Tasi'u min Wuldi the ninth of my progeny. Because Imam Mahdi is the ninth person from Imam Hussein onwards. وَهُوَ الْإِمَامُ الْقَائِمُ بِالْحَقِّ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتَهَا He is the Imam that is going to uprise truthfully and he is the one who is going to give life to the earth after being dead. He revives the Imam Mahdi brings life back to the world. وَيَظْهَرُ بِهِ دِينُ الْحَقِ or يُظْهَرُ بِهِ دِينَ الْحَقِ عَلَى الدِّينَ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرَهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ And Allah is going to make the right religion, the true religion, victorious over false religions, even if the pagans don't like this. This is Quran. هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون. This happens in آخر الزمان. So there is great emphasis that Imam Hussein is from the progeny of Imam Hussein عليه السلام. Then. There is a series of hadith which talks about the day of uprising of Imam Mahdi. There are different hadith. According to some hadith, that day would be the day of Ashura. The day that Imam starts his uprising. The day that, he, because there is a call, and then there is uprising. There is a distance between them. The first call, according to some hadith, is in the months of Ramadan. But his actual uprising starts later on the day of Ashura. For example, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Inna al-qa'im salawatullah alayh yunada bismihi laylata thalathin wa ishreen wa yaqumu yawma Ashura 
يوم قتل فيه الحسين بن علي there would be a call for him in the night of 23rd perhaps the night of Qadr but he will uprise on the day of Ashura in which Imam Hussein was killed this is very important the day of Ashura is chosen as the day of uprising another thing is that when Imam Mahdi Sharif introduces himself according to some hadith he stands between Rukn and Maqam next to Kaaba between Rukn and Maqam where the door of Kaaba is and he says the following sentences Allah ya ahla al-alam anal imam al O people of the world I am the uprising imam Allah ya ahla al-alam ana samsam al I am the one who is the avenger Allah ya ahla al-alam inna jaddi al-husayn qataluhu atshana my grandfather Hussein was killed while he was thirsty. Allah ya ahl al alam inna jaddi al Hussein tarahuhu oriana. My grandfather was left without dress. Allah ya ahl al alam inna jaddi al Hussein sahabuhu odwana. They damaged his body. So you see that Imam, in the beginning of his movement, beginning of his uprising, very clearly makes reference to Karbala. This is not a side issue. This is a very important issue. Three of the five, and if you look at it carefully, even the second, so it will be four of the five, is related to Imam Hussein, but obviously three of them. The other thing is that Imam Hussein salam himself said to Imam Sajjad, Imam Zainul Abidin, Ya Waladi, Ya Ali, because <coughs> Imam Sajjad was Ali. Imam Hussein named all his sons Ali. Ya Waladi, Ya Ali, Wallah la yaskunu dami. By Allah, my blood will not stop moving, will not, you know, become like, you know, frozen or settled. So this blood remains fresh, means this will not be outdated. This issue will remain a very living issue. Hatta yabathallahu al Mahdi Fayakutula Allah Dami Minal Munafiqin al Kafarat al Fasaka Sabina al Fan till Mahdi comes. This is Imam Hussein telling Imam Zainul Abidin Mahdi comes and kills because of my blood seventy people of those who don't believe, those who are transgressors, those who are hypocrites. A person called Harabi from the city of Harat asked Imam Reza alayhi salam that people narrate a hadith from Imam Sadiq so he wanted to check with Imam Reza. He said people narrate from Imam Sadiq that when Imam Mahdi comes he will kill some of the progeny of the killers of Hussein. Because they are not alive themselves. Is it true? Imam said, Hova Kadalik. said, yes. So he said, so what about the ayah which says, La tazaru wa ziratun wazra ukhra. No one carries the burden of another person. If someone is a killer, the progeny has no problem. In Barakat, I say that these people don't realize that when we say Zurriya, we don't mean blood Zurriya. We mean ideological Zurriya. 
When we say Al Marwan or Al Ziyad means party of Marwan, party of Ziyad. Because from a Quranic point of view, your progeny is the one who fully follows you. Maybe he is not your son from a genetic point of view. And if someone doesn't follow you, he is not your son even if he is genetically your son. The son of Nuh, Quran says, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَحْلِكِ He is not your son. Although, from a genetic point of view, he was his son. But Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَحْلِكِ He is not your son. On the other hand, as Salman مِنَّا أَحْلَ bayt Salman is one of us. Salman was ethnically different, let alone blood relation. There was no blood relation. Even his ethnicity was different. It's a matter of following. Or in the story of Talut and Jalut and the army of Dawood, when they reached the river, the commander told them, whoever drinks from this river more than a little, he's not from me. So to be from someone means to follow someone. To have the same idea as someone. So, let's go back to the hadith. So he says, I asked Imam Raza, is it true that Imam Sadiq said such a thing? That Imam Mahdi will kill the progeny of the killers of Hussein because of what their fathers did? He said, Huwa kadalik, yes. Then I said, وَقَوْلُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَلَا تَزْرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى مَا مَعْنَى So what is the meaning of no one carries the burden of someone else? As I said one another perhaps night, this is very beautiful that Ahlul Bayt السلام, have discussion with people. They don't say, because I am Imam, you shouldn't make any question. This is the beauty of the school of Ahlul Bayt. We never ban asking questions. Indeed, Ahlul Bayt encouraged the Shia to ask questions. They themselves said, whenever we tell you something, ask for evidence from Quran. They wanted to increase their knowledge. They wanted also to equip them with arguments so that they can also discuss with other people. So Imam said, Sadaqallahu fi jami'a aqwali. Of course, whatever Allah says is true. Walakin ذراري قتلة الحسين يرضون بفعال آبائهم. These are those who are happy with what their forefathers have done. These are not the people who say, you know, we regret over what our parents have done. We don't accept what they did. These are the people who say our fathers did something right. Last night, we used this ayah from the Quran itself. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to some of the people of the book that didn't believe in the Prophet, why did you kill the previous prophets? While they themselves had not killed, it was their forefathers who had killed the prophets. But because they don't condemn, so they are responsible. So if today, there is a person who doesn't condemn killing of Jesus, then he would be responsible. <coughs> because if you are not happy, you have to condemn. <coughs> so, <coughs> They are happy with what their forefathers did. And they are proud. Of what they did. وَمَنْ رَضِيَ شَيْئًا كَانَ كَمَنْ أَتَاهُ When someone is happy, when someone is pleased, it's like he's doing it. I explained last night. سَمِعَتْ بِذَلِكَ فَرَضِيَتْ بِهِ لَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا Now Imam gives you a rule. لو أن رجلا قتل بالمشرق فرزي بقتله رجل بالمغرب. If someone is killed in the east and another person in the west is happy with this killing, 
Thousands of miles is away. He has nothing to do, but just he's pleased. He is also involved in the sight of Allah. So from a spiritual point of view, you are also like a killer. Maybe your punishment is not the same, but as long as you approve that killing, you are also involved. You cannot get away with this. وَإِنَّمَا يَقْتُلُهُمْ القائم عليه السلام إذا خرج لرضاهم بفعل آبائهم because they are happy with what their father did so if they are not happy no one will fight against them this is with the people who are happy inshallah if Allah gives me tawfiq tomorrow I will explain what I think would happen in Akhir zaman and how things will be built around Hussein. How the conflict between truth and falsehood will have one of its central point of conflict around Hussein. Inshallah, I will explain this tomorrow night if I am alive. Then these hadiths show that Imam Hussein alayhi salam's blood will be claimed by Imam Mahdi. Another thing is that there is a connection between helping of Hussein and helping of Imam Mahdi. These are connected. There is a hadith that in the night of Ashura, Imam told his companions. One of the things that he told is this. وَقَدْ قَالَ جَدِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَلَدِي حُسَيْن يُقْتَلُ بِطَفْ كَرْبَلَا غَرِيبًا وَحِيدًا عَدْشَانًا فَرِيدًا my son Hussein will be killed in Karbala while he is alone, while he is thirsty and abandoned. فَمَنْ نَصَرَهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَنِي In that time that Hussein is alone, whoever helps Hussein has helped me. So if someone has not helped Hussein, he has not helped the Prophet. He cannot claim that I am a helper of the Prophet. Whoever helps Hussein has helped his son Hujjah. So helping Hussein is helping the Prophet and helping Imam Mahdi. This is what I told you last night, that in Islam, we are not limited in time. We go beyond time. Today, you can be a helper of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And at the same time, a helper of Imam Mahdi. Because there is no difference. They have the same causes, the same ideas. If you are happy with that and working towards achievement of those goals, you are helping all of them. And if you now betray one of them, you are betraying all of them. So helping Hussein and helping Imam Mahdi are connected or identical actually. Perhaps from this we can understand that if we today spread the message of Hussein in a wise way, in a rational way, in the way that other people can understand, we are helping Imam Mahdi. If you do it properly, you are helping Imam Mahdi. Tomorrow, inshallah, it will become more understandable. 
The other evidence for saying that there is a strong connection between Imam Mahdi and the Imam Hussein <coughs> is about the angels. You know, one of the things that is very clearly mentioned in many, many hadiths, it's not one hadith, two hadiths that you say, you know, it's not correct. Many, many hadiths is that even the angels mourn for Hussein. When we say, Jallat wa adumat musibatuka fa samawat. So one group of the inhabitants of the skies, of heavens, are angels, and they mourn for Hussein. And there is an ayah in the Quran which is very beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the f uh, group of Pharaoh, Pharaoh and his people, when they drowned in Nile and died, Allah says, Ma bakat alayhimu sama wal ard. Neither a sky nor earth cried for them. What does it mean? It means that there are people that when they die, the earth and the sky cry for them. One day, Imam Ali alayhi salam was talking about this in Kufa. This is narrated in Kamil al-Ziyara. He was talking about this ayah. This is Surah Dukhan number 29. When Imam was explaining this ayah, Imam Hussein entered the mosque. <coughs> Imam Ali then said, Amma inna haza sayuqtal. But this is different from Pharaoh and his people. This will be killed wa yabki alayhi sama and the sky and earth will cry. Many hadith says that the angels mourn for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. For example, there is a hadith narrated by Aban ibn Taghlib from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And this hadith says that 4,000 angels wanted to help Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. You know that Imam Hussein didn't let them to help him. They went back to get permission so that without blessing of Hussein, they still help him. By the time they came back, Imam was already killed. So, فَحَبَتُوا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَقَدْ قُتِلَ When they descended to the land, to the earth, <coughs> Imam was killed. فَحُمْ إِنَّ قَبْرِهِ now they have remained in Karbala. And they are shu'thun ghubr. They are covered with dust. Yabkunahu ila yawm al They will cry there till the day of resurrection. Vahum. This part is very important. Vahum yanzuruna khuruj al and they are waiting for the coming of Imam Zaman. So you see the connection again between Karbala and Imam Zaman. There is another hadith, and this is from Imam Raza alayhi salam. وَلَقَدْ نَزَلَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَرْبَعَةُ عَلَافْ لِنَسْرِهِ 4,000 angels came down to help him. فَوَجَدُوهُ قَدْ قُتِلَهُ They found that Hussein is already killed. فَهُمْ إِنْدَ غَبْرِهِ شُعْثٌ غُبْرٌ إِلَى أَنْ يَقُومَ الْقَاعِ They will remain there till the advent of Imam Mahdi. Then they will help Imam Zaman. They couldn't help Hussein. They help Imam Zaman. Do you know what is their motto? What is their slogan? This is their motto. If someone doesn't know all these things that I am mentioning, and for the first time, just see th these things will be surprised. What is the link between Imam Mahdi and Hussein? 
but the link is very strong. In one of the ziyarat, we have this about Imam Mahdi. وَيُنَادِ بِالشَّعَارِ يَا لَثَارَاتِ الْحُسَنَةِ This is the motto of Imam. In another hadith, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, when he talks about the helpers and companions of Imam Mahdi, he says, يَتَمَنَّوْنَ أَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ they love to be killed. They are ready for shahada. Sha'arhum ya latharat al Hussain. The motto is Ya Latha. It means they ask for the revenge for Imam. Eza Saru Yasiru Rubu Amamahum Masirat Shahr. It's a very beautiful expression. Whenever they move. From one place to another place, fear goes in front of them one month in advance. Means everyone is fearful of them, so much fearful that one month before they reach somewhere, they are frightened. They don't need to see them. Because one of the things that Allah helps those who He wants to help is that He makes the enemies frightened. Allah says in the Quran about the Prophet Muhammad that one of the th ways that he helped the Prophet was that he put fear in the heart of his enemies. Sometimes they don't have that much power, but they are frightened. The other evidence is that in the night of 15th of Sha'ban, which is the birth anniversary of Imam Mahdi. Do you know what is one of the best a'mal, if not the best, one of the best, if not the best a'mal in the night of the birth of Imam Mahdi is what? Ziyarah of Imam Hussein. The late Shaykh Abbas Qummi in his Mafatih al-Janan, he says, there are many authentic hadiths from Imam Zain al Abidin and Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, that whoever wants to be able to shake hand with 124,000 prophets should visit grave of Hussein in the night of middle of Sha'ban. Many authentic hadiths. Sheikh Abbas is a scholar of hadith. So it's a many authentic hadiths that if you want to shake hand, or if you want 124,000 prophets shake hand with you, visit the grave of Hussein in the middle of Sha'ban. What is the connection? It means that renewing your allegiance to Hussein is like renewing your allegiance to Imam Mahdi. It means that without love for Hussein, you cannot claim that you are a lover of Imam Mahdi. They are connected. In the night of Qadr, night of Qadr is the night of Imam of the age. Because in every time, in the night of Qadr, Tanazzalul Malaikatu wa Ruh. When the spirit and the angel descend, where do they descend? They don't descend to any airport or, you know, any land. They descend to the heart of the Hujjah of Allah. And this is very clear in Hadith and also it can be understood from the Quran. Because Allah says in the Quran, يُنَزَّلُ الرُّوحِ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ يُنَزَّلُ الرُّوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ مَنْ يَشَاءِ Quran says, He sends the angel and the spirit to the heart of the one that he is pleased with. We have hadith from imams that if there are people who don't believe in imama, argue with them about the Laylatul Qadr. Where do the angels and spirit come down? 
So in this night that everything is decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the next 12 months and then the decisions are brought down with the spirit and the angels to the heart of Imam Zaman, what is one of the best a'mal? Is ziyarat of Imam Hussein. Indeed, it is one of the ziyarat of Mahsuse, and there is a special ziyarat to be recited in the night of Qadr. If you look at Mafati, there is ziyarat of Imam Hussein, especially for the night of Qadr, the 23rd. And again, interestingly, the same thing that 124,000 prophets will shake hand with you. What does it mean? It means that you are supporting a cause for which all the prophets have worked. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيَّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ We have sent all the prophets, gave them book and the scale. Why? لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ So that people establish justice and equity. 124,000 prophets worked so that justice can be established. Who is going to establish that? The people of Akhir zaman under the leadership of Imam Mahdi. When you show your love to Hussein and Imam Mahdi, all those 124,000 prophets are happy with you. They shake hands with you. Anyone who works for justice is the one who is welcomed by them. But this justice, of course, first must start by establishing justice inside us, by not committing any sin. How can you do injustice to yourself? Lakat zalam to nafsi. We shouldn't do injustice to ourselves and to anyone else. In dua in nudbah, this is the dua that we recite for Imam Mahdi. But you see, there is connection, there is link to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Of course, we mention all the prophets because this is one line starting. So we talk about Adam, Nuh, Musa, Isa, Ibrahim, all prophets. We come to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We talk about what happened to the family of the prophet after him. And then we say, Ayn al Hasanu, Ayn al Hussain, Ayn Abna ul Hussain. Where is Hassan? What happened to Hassan? Did he die naturally? None of Imams died naturally. Ayn al Hussain, Ayn Abna ul Hussain. We go on. And then we say, Aina talibu bidamil maktul bi karbala. We don't say Aina talibu bidamil hasan. Aina talibu bidamil amir al mu'minin. Although they are all important. But Aina talibu bidamil maktul bi karbala. Who is the one who is going to demand for the price of the blood of? The one who was killed in Karbala. Aina al Mansur ala man i'tada alayhi waftara. This Mansur is one of the titles of Imam because, as I said, Man qutila mazluman faqad ja'alna li waliyihi sultana fala yusrif fil qatl innahu kana Mansura. In Ziyarat Ashura, you see link between Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi. For example, in one place we say, "An yarzuqani talaba tharik ma'a imam mansur min ahl bayt Muhammad." This is what the Shia have been saying from the time of Imam Bagher at least, because this ziyara is taught by Imam Bagher. They were asking for this opportunity to
to demand for the blood of Hussein with Imam Mahdi. And Yardlugani Talaba Tharik Ma' Imam Mansur with the Imam who is going to be helped by Allah and will be victorious. In another place in Ziyarat Ashura, the same Ziyarah, we say, and Yardlugani Talaba Thari or Talaba Thari come according to some version, Ma' Imam Hudan or Imam Mahdiyan Zahir Natak Bil Haq. I want to be able to call for compensation for your blood with Imam of Guidance who is going to be Zahir, not in occultation, and not a speaking, not silent. It means I want to be in the time of Zuhur, in the time of appearance of Imam. It is also said that on the day of Ashura, when you meet each other, you should do ta'ziyah, you should give condolences to each other because you are all suffering, you are all being in pain for Hussein. How do you do ta'ziyah? How do you comfort each other? We say, A'zamallahu ujurana bimusabina bil Hussein alayhi salam. May Allah make our reward for this suffering great. And then, وَجَعَلَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ الطَّالِبِينَ بِالثَّارِهِ And may Allah make me and you among those people who will call for the compensation for his blood. مَعَ وَلِيِّهِ الْإِمَامِ الْمَحْدِي مِنْ آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامِ with Waliyahi, with his guardian, Fakat Jalna le Waliyahi Sultana. Who is the guardian of Hussein? Al Imam al Mahdi. So you see, it's very now obvious, I hope, for everyone that I didn't exaggerate when I said that. In a very, very special way, Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi are connected. The event of Karbala and the advent of Imam Mahdi are connected. Mourning for Hussein and preparing for Mahdi are connected. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will see what does that mean. Is it just a matter of insisting on asking for someone's blood and you know asking for revenge some people may think that this is something very personal why you are making it you know so big you know no i will explain what does it mean it's not a personal issue it's the issue of justice as the most important ideal of humanity and the most important agenda of all prophets, and inshallah we will see how the event of Karbala can stand as a symbol of missing justice, and at the same time as an instrument for establishing justice. So Karbala shows that justice is not available, and Karbala shows how to gain justice. So inshallah we'll explain this.